In this presentation we are going to look at a how to perform logistic regression with SPSS. The version of SPSS we're using is version 21, full screen mode advice for YouTube. The disease, uh, it's, the data set is called log disease, it's essentially about diseases, dot save and it's available at my website kobryandublin.wordpress.com. And essentially the general structure of what we're going to do is analyze regression binary logistic. So, uh, just a quick uh, discussion about the data set. Uh, it has a dependent variable, which is a binary variable, disease, 0 or 1, yes or no. We have some explanatory variables, age, uh, sociostat or sciostat, uh, sector and savings. Now, apart from cat age, all of these are categorical variables, which is actually an important matter. Let's go to the um, data set there. There we have it there. So, as you can sort of see here, that uh, disease is the uh, is a binary outcome variable. Zero means without disease, one means with disease. So two outcomes there. Hence binary logistic regression. We have a couple of other variables here. Uh, zero one, this is also a binary classification savings. We have sector one, sector two, that's also a binary variable. And we have socioeconomic status uh, as sciostat, so upper, lower, and middle. Okay, and we have age as well. And okay, so let's uh, perform our analysis. So essentially, what we're going to do is try to sort of predict uh, the outcome of a disease based on these variables. Now, just as a quick remark, actually, uh, we don't actually get a really sensible result. Uh, using all of these variables. I'm going to come back to that later on. So I'm actually going to sort of cut this uh, presentation a little bit prematurely because we need to discuss something else first. And so I'm just going to sort of get this thing started. Analyze, regression, binary logistic. That's how we get going in the first instance. Select that. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just sort of reset everything. So our outcome variable here is disease. So that's our dependent, and that goes. That's going to go in there. Now we're not going to use the uh, ID number, so just ignore that one. So we're going to use all the other ones here, and we're going to select them. Now, as I said before, a lot of these variables are categorical variables. Okay, so that's an actually important matter. So what we have to do is from all the explanatory variables that we've selected we have to sort out which ones are categorical variables and specify them as such. So what I've said previously is that apart from age that they're all categorical. So essentially what I've just done there is spe specified that these are categorical variables and that age is not a categor categorical variable. Now there's a couple of other options there but I'm not going to uh, come back to that. Uh, I'm going to sort of deal with that with, uh, later on. So continue that. Now, um, I'm going to put in enter mode, but essentially uh, it's uh, what I'm just uh, sort of highlighting here first off it is that there are a couple of different procedures for uh, variable selection. And essentially what we could do is like rather than pick, uh, use all variables together, which we're going to do now, it's a very simple case, we could actually do um, uh, f variable selection procedures, just pick uh, useful variables only. But anyway, that's for another time. So we're all ready to go here. Uh, let's just, I'm actually just going to quickly look at options, classification plots. I'll just select that for a bit of fun. And confidence intervals for the odds ratio, EXP of beta, of B. And uh, that's actually a, quite a useful. Um, uh, little outcome or a little part of the uh, output. So we're going to continue that and options now. So we have 196 cases and that's good. We have this is what the d how the dependent variable is encoded zero and one. We have some categorical variables here and th this is there's actually just a typo in this. So we got the there's a summary status account of two. Uh, but that's just a sort of error. I'm going to leave it alone, but there you go. And so socioeconomic status, sector within city, sector one, sector two. Uh, so I'm going to sort of skip through this um, uh, 
and sort of go down to the end because there's a lot of material here that uh, one would have to get through. Uh, this is a sort of a classification table uh, of how well the model predicts um, the output. Now you can sort of see here that it gets 130 correct uh, predictions of people without disease and 15 correct with disease but we have two misclassification types we have this uh, we have a false positive and false negative so we have 42 and 9 there so that's the that's the false positive that's the false negative or anyway vice versa so anyways essentially it is 74% uh, correct now what we're looking at down here is the odds ratios so essentially this is the uh, coefficients here this is what goes into the equation now uh, I'm actually sort of g gonna cut prematurely off here because there's a lot of uh, you uh, a lot of not significant results and uh, insignificant results here so this is where variable selection comes into play essentially what I'm going to look at here though so these are the estimates now when, when we construct a, a, a equation based on these estimates here these B values we will also have the odds ratios over here and we have co confidence interval for the odds ratios and you can sort of see that there are only two of the estimates age and uh, sector are the uh, only uh, significant values the significant uh, variables in for this model and the uh, confidence or the odds ratio for uh, age is uh, 1.029 and with a lower uh, uh, lower uh, int uh, int interval confidence interval bar bound of uh, 1.01 .01 to 1.04 as the upper bound likewise 0 0.146 to 0 0.595 Essentially, uh, one, one would simplify uh, the procedure using variable classification or variable selection procedures. So this is actually quite there's a quite a lot of useless material here. So once you do variable selection procedures, it clears a lot of it out, and that's the best time to talk about coming up with regression equations. Okay, that ends my presentation.